So, you're a new skater or maybe you're just doing some research and trying to find out as much as you can before you start skating. And all you're hearing is this crazy ass jargon that you can barely understand. Skateboarding comes with its own language that skaters use, and once you've been skating for a bit, you'll be surprised how effortlessly you'll slip into the lingo. But for now, let's take a look at some of the most commonly used skateboarding terms, or slang, that you'll hear at a skate park. Steez. Steez is a common way skaters describe another skater's style. And no, I'm not talking about their clothes. I'm talking about their riding. You could say someone has steez if their style of skateboarding just looks cool. But what's a better example of steez than the king of steez himself, Versace Plug? There's just something about the way that he rides in his style that makes everything he does look so cool. Now you're probably wondering yourself, how do I get steez? Or how do I become a steezy skater? Well, let me tell you, there's a very simple trick. And basically all you need to do is over exaggerate every trick, drop a knee down whenever you land something, and wave your arms around way more than you should. On top of that, it helps if you have an Instagram page with more than 10,000 followers. And you also want to put the newest trap music in all your edits. This snake. Or a snake. What? You When skaters call somebody a snake, they're usually referring to somebody that cuts them off when they're doing a line and always just gets in their way. Scooter kids are the most likely culprits for being a snake, but the chance of them being a snake increases by 10% if they have a razor scooter and by 50% if they have a helmet that has spikes on top of it that make it look like a mohawk. Even though scooter kids are the most likely to snake you at the skate park, new skaters that are just starting skateboarding have a pretty good chance of snaking somebody as well. So for all those new skaters, here are some skater die tips that will stop you from being a snake. Number one, keep your head up and look where you're going. Number two, observe and follow the flow or the motion of the skate park. And number three, if you do snake somebody, just apologize and laugh it off. It really isn't that big of a deal. Poser. A poser is someone that pretends to be something that they're not. And in skateboarding, when someone calls someone a poser, they're saying that they don't actually skate and they're pretending to be a skateboarder just to look cool. It's very different from the word am or amateur to refer to a skater that just started, calling someone a hesh or a core skater. And when a skater calls someone else a hesh skater, we're talking about how cool that skater is. It could be that he does really difficult tricks, rides with a unique style, or in the wise words of Gucci Mane, has just acquired a lot of sauce. See, when I had no money, I still had sauce. Mm -hmm. See, if you don't got no sauce, then you, you, you're lost. Mm -hmm. But you can also get lost in the sauce. It can also be used to describe a sesh. An example of a hash sesh, or session, would be going to a skate park on a Saturday, smoking a bowl, skating in a bowl, and then getting tacos, skating to the beach, and having a bonfire. When a skater is called a core skater, it's because all they care about is skateboarding. So they aren't always considered hash, as well as core. But the two definitely collide a lot. Sack. This one's pretty self-explanatory. Getting sacked, or sacking a rail, or even sacking your board in some instances is pretty much the worst thing that can happen to you anytime you're riding a skateboard. And in this case, I think it's better to just let the videos speak for themselves, because words just won't do it justice. Landing bolts. This is quite the opposite of sacking a board, and landing bolts is basically what skaters say when someone lands a trick perfectly. And by perfectly, I mean right on the bolts of their skateboard. You'll know you landed bolts when your board feels really secure and balanced under your feet. This is definitely one of the most satisfying feelings you'll get when skateboarding. Mob or mobbing. When you hear someone say that someone else's skateboarding is mob, or that that kickflip that they just did was mob, or anything about their skateboarding is mob at all. It isn't a good thing. When skaters call something mob, they usually mean that it has bad style. You can use skate moss as a pretty good reference, but I'll help you out with a little bit more detail. In skateboarding, there are no rules, and there's no style that you have to skate, or any particular tricks that you have to do to be considered a skater. And there's tons of different styles out there, but every now and then there's a collective thing that all skateboarders hate. The first thing that can be considered mob are kickflips that are too vertical or any kickflip that you don't catch. I'll have more on that later. 
Now, ideally, you want your anchor clips to be horizontal with the ground, or maybe tilt it down a little bit if you want to add that extra bit of steez. But when you do a kickflip and your board is just vertical like a rocket, it doesn't really look good, and it also increases the chances of you sacking yourself with your board. Mobbed kickflips and heel flips, also known as mob flips, happen when a skater forgets to ollie before kicking out when doing the trick. If you have really bad foot positioning and technique, you can even mob ollies. An ollie is considered mob if the board is too vertical, just like with kick flips and heel flips, and also if the board sags under you and doesn't stick to your feet when you're ollieing. The best way to fix mob skating is by asking another skater to spot you and give you some tips. If that doesn't work, it might be your board. If you have an old board you've been skating for a while now, it might be the reason you can't land new tricks or even land old tricks. So if you're looking to get a new board today, consider buying it from our sponsor, cow7.com. They sell high quality boards for a price that won't break your wallet. And by buying their boards, you're also supporting this channel because I get a small commission from everybody that buys a board using the link down below in the description. So if you want to help me out and get yourself a great board, check out cow7.com with the link in the description below this video. Catch, or catching your board, is when you catch your board while it's still spinning with your feet and then proceed to land it. This is the way you should do most of your flip tricks and actually any chicken skateboarding for that matter. If you don't catch your board, that means the board is flipping and then stopping on the ground and then you land on it afterwards. Most skaters consider this to be bad style and it could be the reason that something was called mobbed. Now that I got some of the more basic terminology out of the way, let me cover some of the names of the most common things you'll see at your local skate park. This is a kicker. This is a ramp. At the top of the ramp, there is a metal pipe and that is called a coping. If the ramp goes 9 degrees vertical, it is considered a vert ramp. You know, like vert, vertical, vertical ramp. Yeah, you get the idea. A box is considered a ledge, but a ledge is not considered a box. A rail is considered a rail, but if it's not round, it's considered a flat rail. If the rail goes straight, then down, then straight again, that's considered a kink. This is a hubba. This is a manual pad. That's a spine. This is a swell bub, and this is a pyramid. I'm not really sure what that is. And if you combine all these things together, you get a skate park. If you get one of these things and put them out in the open and not in a park, then that's considered a street spot. And if you and your friends go ride it, it's considered a sesh. Now I keep going forever with all these skateboarding terms, but I'll save it for another video because right now it's about one o'clock. Hey guys, thanks for watching that video. Um, now, before you guys leave, which I know a lot of you probably will leave now that you saw me, you guys think the video's over, it's actually not. A lot of you have been requesting a lot more footage of me skating myself, so I thought I'd throw a little compilation together. Um, it's nothing special, I'm not really that good, but uh, I thought you guys might enjoy it. But before you guys do watch that, I'm just going to beg for some likes and for some comments. And if you guys are new here and have never seen me, go ahead and subscribe. You watched the video this far anyway, so, you know, might as well. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to cut to some clips of me having fun. It's going to be some skateboarding. It's going to be just some random stuff. There's going to be some street skating. There's going to be some park skating. There's going to be every, there's a little bit of everything in this video. All right. This is just some of the clips that I've recorded over the past few days. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Anyway, before you guys go ahead and watch that, I just want to let you guys know that I have merch now. Uh, I got a fanny pack right here. I'm wearing some of it right now. Um, you can just check out the rest of it and link in the description down below and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video